guys, welcome back to Fit Kids TV. I'm Miss Shanley, and today I'm joined by Jasmine and Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Jasmine. Hello. Hi. We also have another special guest with us. We have Miss Min. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for joining us. Miss Min, every day at Fit Kids, we like to start our day with the acknowledgement of country. Great idea. Would you like to join yeah. us? Yes, please. Do you think we should show Miss Min how we do it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here is the earth. Here is the sky. Here are you. And here am I. Worry. Do you know why we do an acknowledgement of country? I do. So an acknowledgement of country is a really special way to say thank you for sharing the land with the traditional custodians of the land. So at the moment, we're on Darug land. So it's a way we can say thank you to the Aboriginal persons, uh, past, present and emerging for sharing this space with us. And part of that acknowledgement means that we need to help look after the land and the animals that inhabit it. I think that's really important. I think so too. Now, did you bring something special to share with us today? I did. I brought one of my favourite books that has some beautiful pictures in it. Would you mind holding it Of for course. Me? Now, this story is called Animals Around the Billabong, and it is a story and illustration by Mike Ingram. The billabong attracts all kinds of animals, like the hobby red kangaroo. She can't walk backwards, but she can go for months without a drink of water. Wow, that's a long time. It's a long time. Really long time. I drink water all day long. I'd be thirsty me too. In the billabong works the old crocodile. He can live for up to 80 years. Wow. He eats the barramundi. Jasmine, do you know what barramundi is? No. So barramundi are some fish that are native to Australia. The shy platypus and the spiky echidna live in burrows near the billabong. The platypus closes his eyes and ears when he goes swimming in the billabong. The echidna can eat 4,000 ants every day. Oh, I think I get a tummy ache. That's a lot of ants. It is a lot of ants. What do you guys like to eat for snacks? Not ants, I hope. <laughs> Her baby is called a puggle. If you look really closely, you can see the baby echidna inside the mama echidna's tummy. All around the billabong are slithering snakes. There is the dazzling diamond python the red belly black snake and the taipan. He is the most venomous snake in the world. Wow. The female emu lays her eggs close to the billabong. Then the male emu sits on the eggs and looks after the chicks when they hatch. The emu can grow to be taller than a person. Oh my goodness. They're very big, aren't they? That's very tall. Lizards wander the outback. The fruit net lizards run on their back legs when they are scared. The goanna likes to steal crocodile eggs for a snack. He's sneaky. The gentle blue tongue skink and regrow her tail if it falls off. That's really cool. It's clever, isn't it? The Tasmanian tiger once drank from the billabong. It is sad that it is now extinct. This means that there are no more Tasmanian tigers left. Bobby, isn't that sad? That's very sad. I would have liked to meet one of those. Me too. That's why it's really important we help look after the animals and the land that we share. In the trees above the billabong lives the sleepy koala. If too many of his trees are chopped down, he could become extinct too. So we must look after our animals around the billabong because they are all precious. I hope you'll help look after the animals as well. I hope you enjoyed that story. Now, did you notice all of these animals in the story, they get around in different ways. So the emu here has big, long, skinny legs and toes down the bottom. And then we've got the crocodile who has four short stumpy legs and a big heavy body that he needs to drag around on the ground. So they will leave different tracks in the ground. 
Would you like to come and join me outside for an activity where we can learn about the tracks that animals make? That sounds like a lot of fun. Would you guys like to come? Yeah. Come on outside and I'll see you soon. I hope you enjoyed that story we read. Did you notice all the different animals and how they get around differently? So what I thought we would do in the sand pit is make some of the tracks from some of the animals in the story. I'd love to see if you know what they are. Okay, let me see. What shall I do first? We might start with a nice easy one. What animal would leave a track like this? Let's have a look. Do you think it might be a kangaroo? I don't think a kangaroo slides around on the ground. What about a goanna? Now a goanna does slide around on the ground, but they also have four strong legs. I don't see any footprints next to the slithery track. Do you think it might belong to a snake? It does belong to a snake. Well done. Okay, let me clear my canvas and see if I can come up with another one. Okay, now this one has got a big toe and some little toes and another one over here little toes and then it's got a little bit of a trap back here and they're very far apart these tracks what animal do you think these tracks might belong to well we know it's not the goanna because we said before they have four strong legs this track there you go there's the goanna he's got four strong legs dragging on the back. No. I think it might be a kangaroo. Did you think the same thing too? Well done. Okay. Let's work through our list and see what we've got next. Bye Mr. Kangaroo. Now this one I've got three toes like this and across and another one and across Another one and across, another one and across. And it has a little slither mark in between. Hmm. What animal might have these tracks? What have we got left? Goanna, emu, crocodile. Hmm. Now the emu has two legs. This creature has four, so we know it's not the emu. Now, could it be the crocodile? The goanna, they both have four legs. They both touch the ground with their bodies. Can you see that? See the goanna touching the ground with his body? And so does the crocodile. But the crocodile has very big fingers. The goanna has skinny, long fingers, just like this. So it's a goanna's tracks. Well done. Okay, let's do another one. Now, let's do... I've got this one. It's a bit like this. And a bit like this. What animal? Do you think this might look like it? You might even be able to see it on the cover of our book. So let's have a look. Does it look like the kangaroos? Not quite, does it? He doesn't have a tail. There's no tail marks down here. Does it look like the emu? Have a look at his feet. It belongs to the emu. His big feet run around on the ground and that's how he gets around. It's one of the very few flightless birds in the world. Okay, I've got one left. Let me see. I'm going to do a big one here. 
big, big track. Another one here. These look like very big, strong feet. And another one here. So four feet and a big mark down the middle. Now, what animal do you think would leave four strong foot marks and drag their big, long body along the sand? He's on the cover of our book as well. I know it's not an emu. We already did him. We know it's not a kangaroo. What do you think it might be? A crocodile! You've got it. Fantastic job. So these tracks look very similar to some symbols as well. Shall we go and meet Miss Shanley over at the gardens to have a look at her symbols? Come on, let's go. Hi guys, I hope you had a great time finding all your animal tracks. We have something really special. So in our special fairy garden, we've got some hidden symbols. I wonder if you can help me find them and we can have a look and see if you know what they are. Can you see any of our symbols? Well done! I can see that too. Hmm, I wonder which one this might be. Do you know any animals that have feet like this? Do you think it could be a dog? No. What about a wombat? No. You're right. I think it's a kangaroo as well. Can you see how many feet there are? Good job. Let's see if you can find another one. Wow. You're very good at this game. Which one do you think this one could be? Hmm, this one's a little bit tricky. I might have to help you. It's a person symbol. Do you think it looks like a person? Maybe we can look up later why that's a person symbol. What else can we find in here? Hmm, this one looks like animal feet again. I wonder what animal has feet like this. Do you know which animal has three toes on each foot? I think you're right. I think it's an emu. Let's see what else is in our garden. We might have a couple more. Wow, this one's very exciting looking. What do you think might be a circle shape like that? And it looks a little bit like a ripples. Hmm, do water have ripples? I think this one's a water hole symbol. I think we might have one more left. Do you think you can see it? You guys are so clever. You found them easy. Which one do you think this might be? We've got lots of little lines coming out around a big circle. Maybe these are some people. This is the meeting place symbol. Now we've actually got something really exciting. You're going to make your own special meeting place. How about you go and join Miss Min? Thank you so much for joining me outside. Now when you're outside in your land or in the country, in your backyard, wherever you are, there are so many things that you can use to build with and learn from and engage with from nature that are fantastic. So what I thought we would do today is make a surprise for our friends, Jasmine and Bobby. Now we want to make them a special meeting place. We want to make them a home. So I'm going to need to collect some sticks and I've got some here ready for me. Maybe you can go into your yard and find some sticks to build with. So I'm going to start with three sticks right here. And I'm gonna dig this one into the ground. And dig this one into the ground. This one, we'll put it right there, and he's going to catch it. And those beautiful sticks. Now, in my pocket, I have some string, some wool. So you can use some thread you have at home. Maybe you have some twine or some ribbon from wrapping birthday presents. Or you could use something like hair ties, for example, hair elastics. And we want it to be nice and because this is the foundation of our humpy. This is what everything is going to be leaning on. So we want it to be as strong as possible. So you might need some help with this one. 
do you think that Jasmine and Tommy are going to like this? I sure hope so. All right, dig it in nice and secure into the ground. That feels pretty good. So this is going to be our door, this little triangle here. And then I've got some more sticks that we can add on top. And what you can do is you can go to somewhere like a park when you're allowed to go to the park and you can start a humpy and other children and people that come along to the park, they might want to add to it as well. So you can see how it grows and changes from all the different people using it. And we've got some long sticks, we've got some thick sticks, we've got smooth sticks and rough sticks. They're all different, just like we're different. Some of them might fall down and that's okay. You can always add some more. How do you think that's going? I think we might add a couple more. And then, shall we get our friends to come over and take a look? What do we think? Let's go and find them. Jasmine! Bobby! Where are you? Did you hear someone call our names? I did hear someone call our names. Let's go. Thanks for coming over, Tommy and Jasmine. Do you like the humpy that we made for you? Yeah, it's really cool. I can't wait to do yarning circle in it. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Do you think you'll make a humpy at home as well? Thank you so much for having me today, Shanley. Thank you for coming along. Jasmine, Bobby, did you like having me in here? Yeah, we had a great time. I'm so glad. See you next time. How will you guys care for country? Bye! Bye.